You know, most of the time I'm in the lab and trying to run a bunch of companies to make these drugs a reality. Uh, but daily, you know, I try to keep a healthy weight. I do intermittent fasting, uh, which is pretty easy because I'm so busy I forget to eat. But I try to skip breakfast and, and even skip lunch if I'm busy. So I'm a night eater. Um, but that seemed to be good because a, a study came out about a couple of weeks ago, at least in mice, that it's not what you eat, it's when you eat that's most important for longevity. I, it doesn't actually matter uh, if you eat a lot in the morning or a lot at night. I like nighttime eating, but you need a period during the day, at least if you're a mouse, probably if you're a human, where you're hungry. Um, and that puts your body in a defensive mode. And this, these are the things that we've been studying in my lab for the last 20 years. What are the processes that diet and exercise do for us that keep us healthy? And why does calorie restriction and intermittent fasting make animals live so much longer? And we think we've figured out a large part of how that works. And now we're mimicking that with molecules. Not only that, when we add them on to a healthy diet and exercise in the animals, they do even better. It's like a supercharged mouse. Yeah. One of the first molecules, that, uh, infamous molecules that we uh, are known for is resveratrol from red wine. That molecule discovered it in my 30s, or at least linked it to aging. What we showed was that if you give it to a, a fat mouse, they're as healthy as a thin mouse. Uh, they live just as long, they didn't get heart disease and all of the other bad stuff. Then what we did was interesting. We gave it to the mice either every day in their food or let them skip a meal every day so that they were fed every other day and that combination of resveratrol plus every other day feeding we had the longest lifespan we'd ever seen and it was so it was additive same with exercise if we give our latest molecule called nmn uh, to a mouse and we exercise it it'll run even further than it could with either of those alone so it's not an excuse to sit around and just eat chips and watch tv it augments a healthy lifestyle gets you further than what you could get naturally I do, I eat healthy, I try to skip meals, uh, I also take supplements, um, and in fact most of my colleagues are in the field of aging, or anti-aging as, as people call it. Uh, so I take NMN every morning. Uh, so about 20 years ago, uh, Lenny Garanti and a team of us at MIT discovered a set of genes that controls aging in yeast cells, just brewer's yeast, what you find in beer and bread. And those genes are called sirtuins, and there are seven of them in our bodies, five in yeast. And what they do is they protect all organisms on the planet, plants, bacteria, humans, from deterioration and disease. They're like the Pentagon. They sense when we're hungry, sense when we're exercising, and they send out the troops to defend us. So when you, when you put more of these genes into a yeast cell or, or a mouse, they'll live longer, between uh, 5 to 20% longer. And so we think that these genes are responsible for the effects of dieting and exercise, which is great. Which, what that means is we can now mimic that with molecules. So NMN is one of those molecules, so is resveratrol. You can think of resveratrol as the accelerator pedal for the sirtuin genes, and the NMN is the, is the fuel. And without fuel, resveratrol won't work, so NMN is the, the gas in the car. Get this, so sirtuins need NAD mm -hmm. to work. Without them, uh, they don't work. In fact, if you don't have NAD in your body, you'd be dead in about 30 seconds. It's a really important molecule. But as we get older, we lose NAD. So by the time you're 50, like I am, you have about the half the levels of once what you had when you were 20. So that's not good. And these sirtuins, they don't protect the body without high levels of NAD. So what NMN does, and this other molecule called NR, which both you can get on the internet, they boost the body's levels of NAD back up to youthful levels again. And if we give them to mice, uh, these molecules to, to mice or even to worms or yeast, they live longer and they're super healthy. Yeah, NMN is, is um, something I, I get from, from myself. I'm not selling anything. So I take a gram of NMN in the morning. Based on clinical trials, it's been shown that that will raise NAD. Animals first. So take, take the yogurt, mix in some resveratrol. Resveratrol is great, but it's really insoluble. It's like brick dust. So in the yogurt, it'll dissolve. Take another half a gram of resveratrol. Uh, and then I also take, at night, some metformin, which is probably the most radical thing that I take which is a, a prescribable drug for diabetes. And so out of studies of 10,000 people and more, it's been shown that people who take metformin, even if, even if they have diabetes, are protected against other diseases of aging, even frailty. And so m most scientists, if you ask them in my field, will say, yeah, metformin is likely to extend your lifespan. It's just that the FDA doesn't let you have it for aging, because aging isn't a disease yet. The good news is that it's extremely rare that you get sick from any of these molecules. Um, in millions of patients around the world, nobody's getting sick. The worst you'll have 
as far as I can tell, is a stomach upset. Um, and I get that, which is actually helpful. If I'm hungry, I, I lose my appetite. But uh, I, I think the downside is extremely low, and the, the upside is you know, anything's better than what's coming. So this is the great thing, is that over the last 20 years, we have figured out, we scientists have figured out, that there are universal regulators of aging, from yeast to worms to mice and in humans. And there are three main pathways that we figured out respond to what we eat and how we exercise. And one of them is called AMPK, uh, and this is a, a target of metformin. And so I'm active, when I take metformin, I'm activating my AMPK, which will send out the troops. Uh, the sirtuins I've mentioned, that's the second of the pathways. And so I take NMN and resveratrol for that. And then the third one is called mTOR, which is a pathway in the body that responds to how many amino acids, how much meat you're eating. Uh, and it will also protect the body if you tweak it just the right way. And there's only, besides eating low amounts of protein, the only way to, to affect that pathway is with a drug called rapamycin, which is, which is a little dangerous to try and is, is used for uh, immunosuppressants. So it's not oh. something that... I would recommend, uh, and I don't take it, not eat too much. It's pretty easy to overeat, so I try to skip one or two meals a day. I enjoy eating mammals just as much as anybody, but um, I try to avoid them um, for the main, well, two main reasons. One is that uh, there's this TMAO molecule that seems to cause heart disease. Um, I avoid sugars and carbs. Uh, I try to run once a week. I do workouts on the weekend. Uh, like you, I, I love saunas. I like to put my body in some temperature stress, so I go heat, and then I jump in a cold bath. And what you're doing to your body when you do that, we think, is to activate these longevity pathways, like the sirtuins. And, uh, and that's really the trick, is to activate your body's defenses against aging. Uh, I mean, the old theories about aging, you've got to throw them out. Most people at parties will tell you, oh, antioxidants, free radicals, DNA damage, or mutations. That is all, for the most part, incorrect. It's the, uh, some Tom Kirkwood's theory called the disposable soma. And our bodies want to do one of two things. We either want to grow really fast and reproduce fast, build up a lot of muscle, cells divide. That's great in the short run. You, you know, you'll be fertile, you can run, but actually that's at the expense of hunkering down and building a long-lasting body. Mm. And that's a trade-off over time. And so animals that grow fast and reproduce fast, like a mouse, will only have a short lifespan. Whereas a whale that grows slowly and reproduces slowly will live a long time. Well, it's hard to ask the mice how they feel, uh, but they, uh, we do test them and we do frailty studies. And we can see that they've got better memory and they can run further on a treadmill. Um, they're stronger, those kind of things. They see better. And, uh, you know, we think that that probably means they're happier as well.